Let's go, let's go work, have a word with Talana. Beloved father, let their memory and sacrifice be a beacon for all hunters, all people to follow. Well, there's a new thing to read here. Record of Red Maw 2. Nice. I want to read this. Amendment to the Record of Red Maw by Inquiring John Dinneman, historian in residence at the Hunter's Lodge. In time all creatures fall, all legends fade away. Such it was with Red Maw, deadliest of thunder jaws. In the summer of the third year of the reign of the Sun King of Vod, Sunhawk Assis received word of a sighting and set out after the beast. Talana, Hawk of the Lodge, went soon after, quickly followed by her thrush, Aloy of the Nora. Fearing Talana might take Red Maw first and thus supplant him as Sun Sunhawk, Assis resorted to treachery, laying a trap for the Hawk. Nine mercenaries ambushed her, but aided by her thrush, Talana defeated them all. Six shot, three blasted. I'm pretty sure I just stabbed all of them with my spear. <laughs> Hawk and Thrush continued after Red Maw, arriving just as the legendary monster took Sunhawk Assis out of the fight, Lash of the Tail. Working together, the two women finally defeated Red Maw in a fight for the ages. Alas, the wounds that Assis sustained were mortal, crushed internal organs, evidence of bowel failure, and he did not live to see Talana take his place as Sunhawk. So ends the record of Red Maw, most murderous of machines. Really did him dirty. Look, a memorial to my father and brother, and all the men who died in the Sun Ring. You made this possible, Aloy. Thank you. You're welcome. So, what's it like to be Sunhawk? It feels like sunrise after a long night. <laughs> I'm in your debt. You'll always have a special home here. If you want it. What happens now, in the Lodge? As Sunhawk, I've made sure we invite prospective members based on ability and drive, regardless of Karja blood. This Lodge will be a stale bastion of the old regime no longer. What was that prayer you were saying when I first came in? I didn't hear all of it. Oh, great sun. Make treaty with the moon to give our fallen quiet rest. Burnish them with the armor of your brazen heat. Give them shafts of sunlight for spears. Illuminate the path to the skies for each one of them. Hawk Gravid Khan Morza. Hawk Sarav Khan Pir. Hawk Yusalin Khan Jagir. Hawk Kulasiv Khan Savali. Hawk Bradavin Khan Padish, cherished brother. And Sun Hawk Talavad Khan Padish, beloved father. Let their memory and sacrifice be a beacon for all hunters, all people to follow. How nice. Well, congratulations, Talana. I should get going. Thank you, Aloy. Despite the Nora. <laughs> May you always take your prey. Nice. And so ends the... Uh, the Hunter's Lodge storyline. Not a surprise to me at all. Oh, let's have a word with this guy, with uh, with that one thrush. So I took down Red Maw, what do you think? Good. from watching me so you're telling you're trying to tell me that you were and watching me fight red maw and didn't try to help me at all i never would have expected you to bring down red maw i'm kicking myself for not seeing your potential from the beginning yeah you should be kicking yourself want me to kick you too i'll jo i'll join in <laughs> kicking i want to do some kicking all right I think that's all that's literally every side quest that I had. Except for this one that's locked and this one that I have no idea where to find power cells. So I guess we'll do a story mission. Uh, <laughs> I've put it off for so long. Hmm. 
we'll see how uh, how quickly I catch up in the story, though. The Blameless Murad. Greetings, Aloy. I am known as Blameless Murad. Please come with me. You're needed for an important consultation. What do you mean? Where's Erend? He's inside, attending the Sun King, where we should be without further delay. Oh, are we going to meet the Sun King? Follow me, please. All Very exciting. Are here to see the Sun King. Yes, and each has come to ask a favor of him. Unpleasant, but that's politics. The Sun oh, King wow. is eager to meet you. The machine tamer with a curious eye for detail. It's all very intriguing. I'm not here to intrigue you. Too late. Looks like there's something up in that First, thing to read. Special treatment, and now outlanders the Sun King, King hasn't heard. Passed by some outlander woman, unacceptable. Deal with it. I believe that two animals in this north go to the front of the line. Ignore them. Nobles are like children who whine when they don't get a second helping of dessert. What's the Sun King like? The most important thing is what he isn't like. His father. I think you'll find him to be a reasonable man. Oh, we are coming up here where, where the thing is that I wanted to read. Aloy of the Nora. She who sees the unseen. Welcome. It would seem you have done me a great service. Erend, tell her what you found. I checked Ursa's tomb. You were right, Aloy. The body is missing a scar below her right knee. I gave it to Ursa when we were kids, fighting over a toy sword. If the body is not Ursa's, then we must assume she is still alive. And I will not abandon her. We only know she was taken, not who took her. I can help with that. Ursa has an enemy among the Osiron. A warlord named Dervon. Impossible. Every clan in the claim has been hunting for him since the liberation. He has to be dead by now. No other Osiron had the motive and ingenuity to lure Ursa into this trap. I expect to find him lurking somewhere near the border. I've already sent an agent to investigate. He'll be waiting for word from us at the marketplace in Pitchcliffe. I can't move troops to the border without provoking the Osiron. But I could send a few vanguardsmen. And perhaps an exceptionally gifted Nora as well. Errant, Murad. Let me discuss it with her privately. Alone with the Sun I King. I to impose further after all you've done, but this is a matter of great importance to me. It sounds like Ursa means a lot to you. Without her Asaram vanguard, I would not have been able to liberate Meridian and end my father's brutal reign. Since then, it has been difficult to maintain peace between our tribes but Ursa has a way of making her people see reason so you see I need her back at my side and quickly who is Durval exactly to understand Durval you must first understand my father he truly thought of himself as a sun god his mind was broken he believed that blood sacrifice would solve, well, everything. So he raided the other tribes for victims, especially the Asaran. Durval fought back. He crafted powerful weapons and rallied his people. My father responded with the ultimate cruelty. He captured Durval's wife and daughter and sacrifice them in the Sun Ring. So why would Durval go to so much trouble to kidnap Ursa? Try to hurt you in the same way his father hurt him? She betrayed him. She fought by his side until she realized he planned to raise Meridian and butcher its people. And she came to me. Together we stopped him and liberated the city from my father. Durval has spent every moment since trying to get revenge. Mostly on the other Asaram who fought with us. He made so many powerful enemies. I thought we'd seen the last of him. I was wrong. I'd like to ask you something about the Sundom and its politics. 
By all means. They call you a sun god who killed his own father in order to unite the tribes in harmony. Is any of it true? They say you can see the invisible, split an arrow at 50 paces, and tame machines at a glance. How much of that is true? It's not too far off. Well, I would like to unite the tribes in harmony, but you saw how many courtiers I have to deal with first. Maybe next week. Quite a place you've got here. You can almost see the little people below the mesa. You don't approve? Well, I have a secret for you. Neither do I. But we must be patient. Change won't come in a single sunrise. But will it happen at all, while men live in palaces? It might. Eventually. If people like you help me bring it about. Your politics seem very complicated. The Asarama are friends, but enemies too. I couldn't have liberated Meridian without the help of Ursa and her Asaram freebooters. Many of them have settled here. But the Eldermen of the Asaram clans and the claim have become jealous of their success. So have many Karja nobles. It's a volatile situation, especially given the fact that my father raided the Asaram for years. Ursa helps keep the peace, promising a future based on mutual gain. But some, like Durval, will never let go of their venom. Hmm. I mean, yeah, the, so the Asaram are, are multifaceted. I mean, I guess like the Karja, there's Shadow Karja and the and the, the regular Karja, I guess. They don't have a special title. What can you tell me about the Shadow Karja? What do they have to do with Ursa? They are remnants of my father's regime, holding out the fortress of Sunfall to the west. Like him, they care only for domination and seek to draw upon the power of the sun by spilling blood in its name. Since Ursa helped me take this city from them, they were perfect scapegoats. Durval knew this, of course, and planned it well. Okay. I need to get going. I know. Well, they say kings should never beg. But please, help me find Ursa. Who says that? Well, Murad, for one. Don't hesitate to ask him or Aaron if you have further questions. Okay. Can I read your book? Joke's on you. I'm already going to do it. The founding of Meridian. We are Karja. In us is the blood of those led by Armin from persecution and pursuit so long ago. Out of the far savage east we came, guardians of a treasure greater than land or metal, the leaves of the old ones. Armin found the leaves in a ruin, picked out by a beam of sunlight, and he recognized at once their importance. Within was etched the first teachings of how to observe the sun, to recognize its guidance, and to understand the place of men, of man. From out of the leaves came the first glyphs, the first writing, so our knowledge could last longer than voices. But when our forefathers offered to share this gift, they were driven out by those they had once called tribesfolk. These ones feared to have the light of knowledge brought to bear on their ignorance or were jealous of its power. And so began the long wandering of our people, trusting only that the sun would guide them and deliver them from the barbarian tribes. The path was hard and marked by the stones of families who fell along the wayside, even Aramin's own. The persecution was unceasing from those without purpose, only the desire to debase and destroy. But the faith of the Karja was rewarded with a distant vision, a tower like a solid ray of the sun holding on the horizon, flashing. Even as their enemies descended upon them, Armin followed the flight of the glint hawks, leading his people through looming canyons and teeming jungles. Again, they saw the tower, so close now it seemed to reach to the very sun itself, and they saw that the glint hawks perched upon it. Beheld in the light of the sun, the tower, the spire, cast its long shadow upon a mesa across the verdant valley. Armin knew he had found a haven for the tribe, as this was a place shunned by those without his faith, who, who cowered from the magnificence of the spire or the shining feathers of the glint hawks. He named this place Meridian from a passage in the leaves, and the tribe settled in the protection of the great mesa. They found the site was blessed in every respect, carving their cliff houses from the bounteous resources and in time from the red rock of the mesa itself, crowning it with the first columns of the City of the Sun. 
Truly the sun gave much to the descendants of our forefathers, granting Meridian great harvests and prosperity, and the bounds of the sundom for as far as its light touched. In time, seeing Meridian shielded us from the dark arrows and plots of our foes, other foreigners brought trade and tribute. Holy Meridian, without spire and sun, there would be no Meridian, but now and forevermore it stands as monument to both, and the glory of Armin and the founders is reflected anew in each sun king of the radiant line and the noble houses of the sun court. How nice. Alright, so they're sending me off to Pitchcliff, but he did say to have a word with Erend or the blameless guy. Hello, blameless man. Aloy. How can I be of service? It's obvious that you're an advisor to the Sun King, but what is it you do exactly? Whatever is needed, of course. Are you always so evasive? It depends. You were right about Avad. He seems genuine. He is the Sun King. I serve him the best I can. What else would you have me say? Huh. Did you serve the last one as best you could, too? Well, I served him to his enemies. It was the best I could do for the Sundom. What did you do? Nothing I could be blamed for. That's why his name is Blameless. Sounds to me like you're a spy. There are many helpful voices in the Sundom and beyond. I like to think of myself as a good listener. So why do they call you Blameless Maraud? Well, it depends on who you mean by they, and what they might wish to blame me for. <sighs> Talking to you is tiring. <laughs> so they say. That's the point. What will I find at the border? An outpost full of Osaram, most of whom want nothing to do with Durval. Still, he inspires great loyalty in those who fought with him against the last Sun King. He will not be caught alone. And don't forget, he is a master craftsman. Nothing delights him more than his dangerous toys. What makes you so sure Durval did this to Ursa? I don't care for sure or certain. I prefer likely or probably. How many Osirum are clever enough for this ruse? Capable of building the weapon you described? Who hate Ursa so? More than one? Not likely. Durval? Quite probably. Even if people think he's dead? That is surely another reason to be suspicious of certain words. I have to go. Then you must. Okay. Hi, Aaron. Are you sober? So, I thought Ursa was dead. And I thought Durval was dead. Dead doesn't seem to mean what it used to. Or maybe I'm just an ass. Whatever. All I know is that it's time to find my sister and get some payback. I hope Murad's guy grabs us a lead. Did Ursa ever tell you anything about Durval? Well, we were both under his command for a while. Sort of. Helped him recruit an army to take out the mad Sun King. But then he got real creepy with Ursa. Needless to say, she wasn't interested, but he wouldn't let it go. Not to mention the fact that we realized he wanted to murder every Karja, not just the bad ones. Long story short, he's a grazer-licking dumbbag. Avad seems committed to finding your sister. Yeah, those two got along. And some people say they shacked up, but I, I don't buy it. Seems a little skinny for her. Oh, okay, some bad images are forming in my head. Let's just focus on finding her. And kicking Durval's ass. Aaron's like, well, better go. Don't stand me up in Pitchcliff, okay? Person needs us. Lucky for you, I have like no other distractions. I, I'm, I've, I exhausted every other route. <laughs> I can't stand you up in Pitchcliff if I wanted to. Uh, okay, there's another book. The Sun King's a record made on sunworn parchment. Uh, we only have two more books to find. The Chronicle of the Sun Kings. The founder, Armin, who guided our forefathers from the shadows of the savage east into the fastness of the Mesa Valley, and who, reading the signs of sun and shadow both, delivered them to the sight of Holy Meridian. 
the bounteous Amavad who oversaw the clearing and sowing of the royal maize land so that none who walked in the sun's favor could, should go hungry again, who cut back the jewel to claim the rich estate lands for the first houses of the sun court, the far-seeing Sadahin, who expanded the sun's dominion to the north, south, and east, setting a gate at Bright Market Harbor, and who before the sun at its highest proclaimed these lands would be known as the Karja Sundom, so by the light it was good. Generous Juadon, who stocked the metal markets with the spoils of his own trampler hunts and who allowed trade from north and south, even permitting outlanders the gift of the counting glyphs so they might understand more than simple barter. Zavarid, the pilgrim sun king whose tower was raised to the top of the ridge of veils and who crossed the great waters of the daybreak, so the sundom might extend ever further, and to honor this passage had the great blazon arch raised on the far shores. Bold Irive, who saw the sun's passing into the west as a challenge, and forged after it with a great army to be pushed back three times at the great canyonlands that would be known as the Daunt, until on the fourth time his cohort broke through and were vanished in the lands beyond. Prudent Basadid, who had the mantle of his fallen brother thrust upon him suddenly, who ordered the construction of the Fortress of Sunfall and the garrison at Blazon Arch, declaring the land beyond at the Forbidden West where only the sun may go. Kuvadin the Returner, who strove to bring civilization to the savage east but returned after many strenuous endeavors, saying it was no longer fit for the people of the sun and called for the building of great towers and walls so this wild land might be observed safely. Renan the Firebird, who saw the sundom suffer unprovoked attack by the Tanakh, Tanakh Horde, and who against the protests of his advisors accompanied his army to confront them under the sun he claimed victory, though he was so greatly scarred he wore his blazon helmet from that day. Nahasis, who was a hunter as much as a sun king and called for the proudest men of the noble houses to prove themselves in competition beneath the sun, and that those who felled the greatest machines would be situated as the first sun hawk and hawks of the hunter's lodge. <clears throat> the illuminated Marzid, who the sun visited with visions so vivid and grand he commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visage in Meridian, and for his summer palace in Sunfall had the great citadel raised where he remained painting until he took deathly ill from his own pigments. Kivaz, elder brother of Marzid, who decreed each family with a suitable male child should submit that child in service of the Sundom's then depleted ranks, and had the artisans turn their attention from works of art to outfitting each soldier of the sun with the very finest armor, halberd, and bow. Juran, who in his early years was a strong sun king, defended the sun to defending the Sundom from the encroachment of other tribes and the derangement of the machines, but who became greatly addled and ordered the spilling of much blood in the sun's name, threatening to bring a twilight time upon us, and then Avad the Liberator. Okay. Fascinating. We need to find a save point. Because we're heading to Pitchcliff next. I'll fast travel to a nearby campfire for today. Ugh, I still have to find a merchant Ugh, that could sell me the Shadow Rattler. Alright, where's the save point? I saw this quite game progression. I want to look at this. 74%. Oh, crap. Interesting. Okay. I'm farther along than I didn't expect that to be that high. I wish they would tell me where to find these things. Oh. Oh, I can buy something. Uh, I guess traps. 